Hello everyone, this is TechWizKid and welcome back to another TechWizKid tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install and set up Unihost on your home PC with Microsoft Windows Hyper-V. If you're not sure what Unihost is, it's essentially a specialized Linux uh, distribution or application on top of Linux that allows you to easily install and maintain a bunch of uh, different kind of applications. There's a full listing of applications here on their website, which I'll have in the description below. But for our purposes or for my purposes, I'm mostly going to be using it for WordPress hosting. Um, but there's literally a bunch of official um, sources or, or apps that you can install. But there's also a bunch of unofficial ones. Uh, these ones are just the ones that are super easy to click and install. And it makes it very fast and efficient to spin up a new website or whatever the case is. So before we get fully started, there's a few requirements that you need to know. Um, in order to get this set up at home, you are gonna need some type of basic knowledge of port forwarding on your router because you need to be able to forward people uh, to these different services on your, on your system. You need a Windows PC with uh, either Windows 10 uh, Pro or Enterprise. I'm sorry, Windows 10 Home does not work as Windows Hyper-V is not included with Windows 10 Home. You can use a, a different virtualization platform if needed, but this tutorial is specific to Windows Hyper-V. You will need a, a PC that has at least one gig of available RAM for the virtual machine, as well as probably about 30 gigabytes of storage. You can get away with less, but 30 gigabytes is probably the least that you wanna go if you're going to be using some of the other services like mail services or hosting documents, that kind of thing. To get started here, the first step is going to be installing the Windows 10 Hyper-V Roll. The way to do this is just go to your start menu and you can just start typing in Windows uh, features. It might actually autocomplete here, but turn Windows features on or off. You're gonna get a big list of features here. I'm gonna go into the Hyper-V section and just check off both Hyper-V management tools and Hyper-V platform, then click on OK. It's gonna do a quick search for the required files, um, download and install them, and it's most likely going to require a reboot of the PC. Once the PC has been rebooted, we can continue on from there. After the reboot, you're gonna double check that you have the Windows Hyper-V Manager by going to the Start menu on the lower left and typing in Hyper-V Manager, or you can just start typing it, and you should have it available right here. Under here, you should see your PC's name. You're not gonna have any of these virtual machines. It's just because I'm in my test environment here. If you don't see your PC name here, just click on connect to server on the right hand side, select a local computer and click on okay. And that should get you started. Now, before we create the virtual machine, we need to create the virtual machines network connection. It's easier just to do this ahead of time. So go over to the right hand side and select virtual switch manager. In your list, you're only gonna have default switch. I already have a couple pre-created here for my test environment, but you're gonna leave the default new virtual switch connected or selected and select external from the list and click create virtual switch. You can name this whatever you like. I usually like to name this LAN or LAN one, whatever the case is for you. And you should be able to leave all the default settings. Uh, click on apply and then okay. You're going to get a notice that your connection may briefly be disrupted, that's okay. Now that that virtual switch connection is made, the next step is to set up and install the Unihost with an ISO file. So to get that ISO file, open up your favorite internet browser and you're gonna navigate to the Unihost website. I'll have the URL in the description below. Click on the get started link, click on on a regular computer, and then step zero, download the Unihost ISO image and for most people, 64-bit regular computer should be the correct image. I should already have this downloaded, so I'm not gonna download it again. I do, it's right in my downloads folder. So now we're going to create the virtual machine. So on the right-hand side, just go over to new, virtual machine, click next. I'm gonna call this Unohost server. We're gonna leave this generation one I'm also gonna leave it at 1,024 megabytes of RAM, which is one gigabyte. And I'm gonna select LAN one or whatever you called your connection in the first step. Select that, next. I'm gonna limit this to 30 gigabytes for 
the hard drive size just because I don't have so much space on this test environment, but you can keep this whatever size you'd like. It's only going to use that space when you actually fill up the Unihost server, but um, I'd recommend at least 30 to 35 gigabytes. Click on next. You're going to select install an operating system from a bootable CD slash DVD ROM. Click on select image file. And we're going to go to my downloads and we're going to click Unihost stretch. Click on open next and then finish it's going to create this virtual machine for us and then there's one other thing we want to do just before we start this is right click the machine go to settings and give it a little bit more cpu resources i'm going to give it four virtual processors i usually like to go at least 25 percent of total system restores resources it kind of depends on your environment but for our use case we'll just do that click on apply and then okay now you can right click and start and right click on connect and this is the installation window for Unihost it's a little bit small so um, forgive me for that but it should be a little bit easier to read you're gonna go down to graphical install you may need to use your keyboard because your mouse will not work and click on enter Select your language and your location and our keyboard layout. Most of this is just the default operating system setup. This part will take a second, so we're going to let it load all the components from the ISO file. After a minute or so, you should get to a point where you can configure the clock where you pick your time zone and the eastern time zone. Now it's going to detect our disks and partition them. And again, this may take you know 30 seconds to a minute, so just let it do its thing. Once that process goes through, it's going to ask you to if you have another CD to scan. We do not, so you're going to select no and click on continue. And the next step from here is that's actually downloading and, and installing a few of the default apps and stuff for the Unihost. So again, leave this for a couple minutes. I'm just going to fast forward right through it. And as a small side note, just because I ran into the issue here, if you get an error saying that it failed during the software and whatever setup, like the software and installation process, I found it was an issue with my internet connection or actually my firewall blocking for whatever reason um, the uh, apps from getting installed. So I had to uh, temporarily turn off uh, some of the additional security on my firewall. You may or may not run into that. So, But if you do run into that error, just keep that in mind. Once that process starts, you're going to select a location to put what's called the Grub bootloader on. You're going to select whatever is on the bottom here. You don't want to enter a device manually, so just select that. Click on continue and let the installation continue. And it should be finishing up shortly. It's going to automatically reboot the virtual machine. You don't have to click anything, just let this go through.
perfect. Then you should get this, which is your Unohost backend, essentially command line interface. You can do the next steps from the command line, but it is easier via the web browser. So in this list, it says from your web browser, you can access uh, from here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my web browser and I'm gonna put in the address that it shows there. You might get a certificate error. Most of the time you just have to click details and go on to the web page anyway. And it's gonna tell you, congratulations, Unihost has been successfully installed. And we're gonna click on begin. Now, if you're just hosting from home, you may or you probably don't have a domain name and that's fine. Uh, Unihost actually has a built-in uh, dynamic DNS service. So even if your IP address at your house changes, you can still access your server from the outside. So click on, I don't have a domain name and I want dynamic DNS service. Uh, select a name here. So I'm just gonna go tech with kid at dot no host dot me and then click on next. And you're gonna set a password for administration here. Then click on go. Then click on okay going to set up the information here and after that couple minutes it should spit you to the login screen you're going to put in your administrative password that you set a minute ago and this is the Unohost web panel interface the first thing I always like to do is go to the diagnosis section and ensure that I'm not getting errors that I'm not familiar with you are gonna get a bunch of them at first, uh, especially if you haven't port forwarded or anything yet, but we're gonna check that. So once that finishes, you may get a lot of red and yellow and then it's this next green and that's okay. Really mostly what you need to worry about is under this heading here, DNS records are missing for your domain category basic. It may take a minute for the Unihost dynamic service to update, but eventually it will, and that should be green. These other ones for XMPP or category extra, you may not actually need um, you know, to do this. This is if you wanna uh, install um, a certificate on your domain, we may do a separate video about that. Um, but for XMPP, I ignore it. Mail, I ignore it because I'm not using a mail service from home. More than likely, your ISP is not going to allow you to send email from your server anyway. So those I just ignore. The next step really that I unfortunately I can't show you specific steps on how to do is to forward port 80 and port 443 to your Unihost server. This is done on your firewall or on your router device and your Unihost server IP that you need to forward to is located uh, in this window here. So I can see 10.0.10.123. Go to internet connectivity and go to details it tells you your local IP here, and this is my global outside IP. Um, but it shows your local IP here. This is what you need to port forward to. Now, by default, what I just showed you, this IP is going to be what's called dynamic, which means this IP can change our local IP. So if you set up port forwarding on your router to always go to this IP, and then your virtual machine reboots or something like that, it may change and we may not want that. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna change this to a static IP. And that's gonna be done not through this web interface, but actually through the command line window in the back here. Um, if you haven't set it up before, I'm just gonna click on no for the post installation. And we're gonna log in with root, with the password that we set. And root is just the default and the password that uh, is for the root account is what you set on that post setup window. Now, once you're logged into the root account of your Unihost server, there's a couple steps to change to a static IP. So step number one, type in IP link show. In this listing here, you should have an LO and an ETHO or zero that will tell you the name of your ethernet card. Uh, you're most likely going to need to be editing ETH0. So type in here, nano, 
forward slash etc forward slash network forward slash interfaces. And again, I can put this in the description below if you'd like. Click on enter. And essentially this is a notepad document that we're going to be editing. You can't use the mouse, you can only use the arrow keys. So use your arrow keys to navigate to where this says DHCP. Change this to type in static. Click the enter key. Tab over once. Type in address space and then the address that you want to set it to. I'm going to set mine to 10.0.10.50. Make sure this is something that isn't under your regular DHCP scope and that is currently available. Click on enter again. Tab. We're going to say net mask 255, 255.255.0. .255 These settings are going to change depending on your network, so you may need to double check what your settings are specifically, but gateway is your router, netmask is typically 255.255.255.0, and then your obviously your address is gonna vary for you. To save this, hold the control key and press X. It's gonna ask if you'd like to save it. You're gonna say Y for yes. It's gonna ask you to overwrite, just press enter, and that should be saved. But after a reboot, I was able to get back. As you can see, I changed it to dot 50. Details, go on to web page. Going to log in here. Perfect. And like I said, as long as you port forwarded now to the correct place inside your router, and to me, that would be 10.0 to 10.50, your DNS record should be good. And these should show as green 40, 80 and 443. And that should be it. That should be the basics you need to get started with Uno you know, Host. I may do some more specific videos on specific services, such as hosting your own website from home. Um, I believe there's some other uh, applications available as well. Um, the full listing is available on the website of all the different applications they can install. But other than that, thank you for watching. Stay subscribed for more future tutorials, a lot more self-hosting content coming in the future. And thank you very much.